It's Mother's Day this weekend in the UK, which is where my mother-in-law lives. So today I'm sharing two pretty cards that will make any mother smile. The first one starts with a nine layer stencil set. Yes, nine layers from Lisa Horton Crafts. This is a new company to me and it's easily available in Canada. So I've been trying out the shimmery interference ink, which give different colors on white or black cardstock. I'll just work my way through here while I chat a little bit. There is a layering guide on the packaging so you can tell what is leaves and what is flowers and that's super helpful when creating this incredibly detailed design. I thought I would just use these interference inks like I normally do with stencils to see how I like the shimmer. They're on foam pads and they blend easily, but I do find that I have to pick up ink a little more often than I do with my Catherine Pooler dye inks. So I don't know if that's the paper I'm using, the ink itself, the blending brushes, or a combination of those things. It does move nice and smoothly on the paper and it dries quickly enough that I don't need to wait between layers. And I didn't end up smudging anything. So it doesn't have that kind of goopy feel that pigment inks or some metallic inks might have. The colors blend really nicely too. My green and blue are giving a nice aqua and the yellow and pink is giving a pretty corally orange. You'll notice that along the left edge, there's a tab with holes and that works with Lisa Horton's Ultimate tool to hold the stencils in place. But clearly if you don't have that, Sticking the stencils in a corner works just as well. I used a six by six inch piece of white cardstock so I could get the whole scene done and then decide what portion of it to put on my card. But you can also make a big six by six inch card. Whenever I'm in the UK, I notice that they seem to really like big cards there. The shimmer on this is gorgeous, isn't it? I think other time I might try to do some selective stenciling to just get that big flower head. To finish this one, I splattered some gold watercolor over top of it. I trimmed it down and added it to a base that I had blended navy ink onto, along with some more gold watercolor splatter. The honey gold sentiment die cut is from Simon Says Stamp. My second card is a fun technique with this background stamp from Technique Junkies. I love this pattern, and I noticed that each square is the exact opposite of the one next to it, so I wondered if I could just shift the stencil to get a fully filled in two color pattern. I started by stamping it with cummerbund ink. Well, I actually started by refilling my cummerbund ink pad, and then I stamped it in my Misty with no grip mat, since the stamp is red rubber on a clean backing. Then I got out a piece of acetate, and I put that in the corner of the Misty and stamped it again with the cummerbund. That wasn't the best idea. It kind of beaded up on the acetate, and the color was too light, and you really need to be able to see clearly for this to work. So I stamped on the acetate again, but this time with black ink to get a very crisp and visible impression. Now I don't want to move the stamp, I want to move my paper, and having the impression on the acetate allows me to pick up the image and position my paper properly behind it. I hope that makes sense. I lined it up by checking the top left corner and the bottom right corner. Because it's geometric, if those two are lined up, everything else should be as well. And then I laid the acetate and cardstock back in the Misty with the acetate right in the corner because that's where the stamp will stamp. Watching now, I realized that I could have put some temporary adhesive on the back of the cardstock so that it didn't shift at all when I lifted the acetate, just for extra security. I cleaned the black ink off the stamp, and that's really why I didn't want to use black in the first place, but it was definitely necessary. And then I inked it up again with Garden Party. And ta-da! It's almost, well, almost perfect. It's amazing how it even looks like it's textured. Really cool. To finish this one, I cut an essential heart from the center. These dies are retired, but I love that negative frame that it cuts that I can leave out. I added that same Simon Says Stamp sentiment and I finished it with some itsy bitsy flowers from a Jillian Vance design. These designs don't have to be just for Mother's Day, and that's what I love about creating backgrounds. By having a stack of backgrounds ready, plus pre-cut sentiments, you can put together a quick card anytime you need one. Want to learn more about how I use leftovers to make my card making more efficient? Head over to this video and I'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.